Hey, what's up guys, MKBHD here, back with a video taking a look at one of the slimmest, most well-built Ultrabooks that you can buy right now. We're taking a look at the Asus ZenBook UX31. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up on this video if you enjoy it, and without any further ado, let's get right into this one. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start this off by saying the ZenBook UX31 is a picture-perfect definition of an ultrabook. And in case you didn't already know, I'll include a link in the description. A Zenbook, in order to be called an ultrabook, needs to fit a certain number of qualifications, and this does just that. You can see it's razor thin, and it has a nice tapering design to it from back to front, but this one separates itself from other possibly tapering laptops. Uh, check this out. On the right-hand side, you have a USB 3.0 port, okay, 3.0, uh, power, mini VGA, and mini HDMI ports, and a battery charging light. And on the left hand side you have another USB port, a headphone jack, and a memory card reader. And there you can get a good look at that nice solid tapering design. So there's nothing on the bottom of the laptop and the battery, while it's non-removable, is actually pretty good so it wasn't a problem. And the whole laptop is this nice spun metal finish that's just, just screams slick or something. I don't know, it's hot. Reminds me of the Transformer Prime actually. Uh, but there's no ports on the back of this laptop either, which is perfect the way it should be. So all you have is this hinge, and I can tell that ASUS spent time, designed it properly, put the right parts in the right places, just so that it could do this. Oh yeah! Boss! <laughs> Does your laptop do that? I didn't think so. Okay, so once you open it up, you get the keyboard, the trackpad, and the screen. And this is where you can make or break it here in a laptop. The keyboard, it's alright, it's not the best I've ever used, but it's definitely not the worst. There's a little bit of flex, but not much because it's metal, and the size of the keyboard was fine for even my mammoth sized hands, and there's function keys and everything, they work great with Windows. The keyboard is pretty good. And the display was right on. I might not be a fan of glossy on the desktop, but they pulled it off here with a 13.3 inch 1600 by 900 IPS panel. The viewing angles were decent. Uh, but the screen actually gets really, really bright, which is nice for using it outdoors. And the trackpad, uh, mm, no, it's just bad. I mean, it's a, it's big and smooth and has nice hidden buttons and everything, but for some reason mine just wasn't that sensitive at all. It was really weird. I don't know if it was just mine or maybe too much, uh, maybe I'm a mouse and keyboard kind of guy, but I feel like if you're getting an ultra portable laptop, you don't really want to carry around a secondary mouse, you know, so the keyboard and the trackpad should be really top-notch. But this trackpad let me down. It worked okay with Windows gestures, but I would have preferred a more sensitive keyboard and trackpad. I feel like it could use a firmware update or something. So inside the beast we have Windows 7 Home Premium and an Intel Core i5 2557M at 1.7 GHz, so you know what that means. You can do work on this thing. It's an ultra low voltage processor, so battery lasts while, but performance doesn't lag behind even a split second. The graphics were snappy and it's responsive to everything I threw at it, including editing a video while plugged in, uh, in power mode, but still. Um, I'm convinced that the 128 gig SSD in this laptop had a lot to do with that. Also, the speakers were really loud. It surprised me. It kind of blew me away, actually. But I'd like to see more of the technology they used in these speakers in more mobile devices. I liked it a lot. And all of this comes in a 17 millimeter thin package. I don't have to tell you which one's the Ultrabook. At least I hope not. <laughs> Peace out, guys. 